This video is brought to you by Parabellum Games. You can also check out their eShop and use East Mini 10 as a code and get 10% off and support the channel. And today I'm going to be painting the city states Agema and Torakites. Alright, folks. Welcome to the channel. So today I want to thank Parabellum for sending me uh, this uh, demo kit of the Agema guards and the Torakites from the City States faction. It was glad I was glad to get this box in the mail. It's always a surprise when you get a tracking number that you have no idea what it's from, and then you receive a nice box of these kind of surprises here. More miniatures. Here I am just cutting out the sprues. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is what the final box is going to be like. You get three sprues, and in them you're able to cr create a dual kit of either Agemas or Thorakites. So you can create six of each, you can create 12 of each, you can create eight and four, whatever. I do have to say, however, that um, there wasn't much difference between the Gemma and the Thorakites, to be honest. Technically, they're built exactly the same. They have the same poses. They use the same shields, the same capes, the same swords. The only real difference is the commander or the officer, I guess. And... Uh, you get that on each sprue, so you could use that same shield, and that's the one I'm going to be using on the Thorakites. This is the Agema here after he's built. He's also Zenithal primed with a black primer and then top spray of a spray can. Uh, there is some speckling, but surprisingly enough, it doesn't show up because it was very smooth. I tried to go as thick as possible, not thick, but you know, make sure that the white is what's popping. And we're starting off with some warrior skin here, and I'm, I'm doing this on both the Agema or Agema uh, and the Thorakite. And I'm using the exact same paints, except for some of the metals you'll see I'll use after the speed paint. Speed paint metallics are going to be different. Uh, so I didn't want to do two separate videos because it's pretty much the exact same miniature. I just wanted to show you what the different looks could be and also what the different speed paint metallics do on these ones as well. They already saw me use those on some other uh, Conquest miniatures. Uh, I use pretty much all the colors. Here I'm going to be using some different golds, but I'm going to be using the exact same uh, silver and uh, a little bit darker silver as well. So you're going to see what those look like on these beautiful miniatures. And speaking of that, Enchanted Steel, which is by far my favorite metallic speed paint because it does work like a speed paint. It gets into the crevices, darkens the area, gives it a nice shine of a metal color. It works like as if you would put a silver paint underneath and then use the Gravelord Gray on top of it. It just does a great job on these metallic, metallical, me, geez, metallic arms or mechanical arms, I should say. Wow, I'm metallic mechanic, all sorts of fun stuff here. So these uh, city states seem to have a lot of mechanical arms to them. So I really want to show that on this miniature. Polished Steel is our next Speed Paint Metallic. And this is going to be just for the sword. And again, this is one of my least favorite ones because you barely see on top of the white where you're painting. You're not even sure if you got the whole area or not. Uh, the next the Speed Paint we're using is Dusk Red. And this is going to be for like the leathery parts of this miniature. There isn't too many, but there's like, these straps coming down from his belt here. There's also the bottom part of the boots, which I decided to do that. And I forgot to do on camera was the straps holding up the shields. So I do get those eventually and I noticed them as I was painting the back of the shields. I was like, whoops, I got to do this part as well. Now, the only thing I find kind of interesting is that you could almost use this as a skin tone, actually. It does have a touch of a red hue, but I think it would have worked nicely as a skin tone on like uh, different nationalities or whatever. I think it's pretty cool as a skin tone because it really is close to the warrior skin here. And you can see it really next to it that it's got a similarity to it. And then the warrior skin, as it dries, amazing. It just gets in the nooks and crannies. Okay, Speed Paint 2.0 is really bringing it this time. They're doing a great job with it, so thankfully. And I'm looking forward, I think I'm missing 17 of their colors that are coming out soon. They're supposed to have hit the stores already. I haven't seen them in Canada yet. I'm waiting for Bootsick FDB to get them and get my hands on them. Tidal Wave. Now this one was something won wonky with it. I was shaking it, could not hear the mixing ball. So at first I was like, did they forget to put them in it? I kept shaking and shaking, nothing. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to paint with it. It was horrible. It was like it was just medium with a little bit of blue in it. Like you'll see when I do the cape. Now I do put a second layer on this off camera because I was like, well, I want to show you guys what it looks like. But watch. So at first, it, okay, I'm like, okay, that's nice. And then as I keep going down thinner and thinner, it was like, wow, this is like water. It's not covering. It's pretty horrible. It's leaking everywhere. And when I came back to it to do the second uh, coating, and I'm doing that color on this one, but I'm doing a different blue on the Torakite, um, 
I shook it up, finally heard the mixing balls in it, finally got to shake it really well, and then it covered. Still not great, but it was pretty good. So if you're using Tidal Wave, make sure you hear those mixing balls come out and you hear them shake well, because it needs a good shaking. And like I said, I want to have a little difference between the two miniature types. So I went with the Beowulf Blue now on the Thoracite. And this one is a lot nicer. Now, at first, it was starting to act a bit like the Tidal Wave. And I was like, what's going on here? But uh, again, it's when it came out of the bottle. I think I grabbed the area that wasn't. And I didn't mix it up on my dry palette enough. So once I did that and I started using it more, it started getting darker, which was perfect. And as I'm doing the cape, then it does exactly what I wanted to do. And I changed brush because I wanted a little bit thicker brush. And as you can see with the white, it really pops. It really does a nice uh, coating, but it does dry fast, this one, quite a bit more than other ones. So you have to hurry up and get it there so you don't get the brush strokes everywhere. You still see some of them, but not much. Uh, again, though, the white comes out a little through, so it is a little bit more opaque than other ones. Uh, but it is a speed paint. It is one coat, and I was okay with that. It wasn't... It's not my. These are not my favorite colors so far in the speed paint range. I could say that for sure. Uh, but they do a good job. Murder Scene, on the other hand, though, is a nice color. This has a nice maroon color to it, like a light, like a dark reddish purple. Really cool. It's great for this um, ribbon or whatever on the shield of the Thorakite. So this is the Commander uh, upgrade, okay? So the helmet, uh, the head, uh, or the face. No, I think it's just the helmet or whatever, and the, the shield and the sword. So the arm, and uh, the shield, uh, the sword arm, is the command part. I mean, you could repeat this uh, three more, two, two more times if you wanted to, and you could change the head if you wanted to. You could do a different. I just followed the instructions as they were in the box, and decided to go with it here. Shamrock green now for the. Now I want to say, are these olive branches? Is that what these are? I don't remember in Greek mythology or Greek history what this is. I think they're olive branches, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, a lot of the Greeks and the Romans had this on their helms or on their, their, their clothing and stuff, especially like the, uh, what do you call it, the, um, the, the politicians in that there. Anyways, all right, so now we're going to stick on the hoplite, on the hoplite, <laughs> no, that's the other city-states guy, but there, we have a gold called hoplite gold now. And we're using this on the thoracite, so on the shield and pretty much all of his armor. Now, I know there's other people that probably painted these out there. They're very different and uh, really... Uh, highlighted the super raised areas which I will do at the end with a different kind of technique but their armor in the artwork is all gold whereas in the other um, past ones like I've done the hoplites and the other guys I can't remember their names uh, I changed it up a bit their gold colors or their armor colors but this one I really want to follow the artwork on the cards so a lot of gold um, uh, some of the blues as well and so on and so forth and of course the arm being mechanical was a darker silver color uh, this gold the hoplite gold is really good it does a good job and again if you don't use it as speed paint it's got good coverage as a metallic paint I find that it does a great job just getting your coverage on if you let it dry enough I would suggest maybe putting a light tone or Agrax Urchade maybe even over it like they do with Citadel paints just to really define those nooks and crannies like get them really in depth because it does a good job but not to the point where it's considered like a speed paint where okay I'm done my highlights and my my recesses all in, like my shading and all in one shot the, re the shading is a bit there but if you really glob it on thick then it kind of goes in a little bit more but you don't want it too thick because then it's going to just pool in the wrong areas and like those blues it did that originally it actually pooled a lot in the bottom parts of the capes and it kind of looked kind of messy so uh, you'll see that on the agenda i actually covered up with some of the dirt i use for the base uh just to make it not look as weird and then we're using the glittering loot uh this is another gold paint from the speed paint metallics of course uh this one does a really good job as well i actually like this one uh, it goes on really well. Again, the good coverage of the metallic paints, which is great. The back of the shield, as you can see, all the speckles are gone. Like the speckles actually left uh, from there. And I even noticed that the speckles are not too much there on the dark blue, but this tidal wave one, it's still kind of there. As you can see, this one is still drying. That tidal wave is still drying. This is one of the longer blue paints that they have that takes to dry. I don't know why there is some that dry faster than others. Uh, Army Painter, if you ever watch my videos, please comment down below if you can explain why some of them dry faster than others. Uh, because it's hard to work when you have a dry palette and you got your paint there and it's starting to dry after like 
a minute and you're like okay i gotta put some more so you're wasting some paint and that happened with quite a few of them actually i don't remember which other colors it was but anyways as i go forward i'm gonna be using more and more of these speed paints and that's gonna be cool because i got some requests of doing some marvel united i'm gonna come back to black rose wars uh, i got so much stuff to paint it it's ridiculous and i'd love to finish my undead army for a conquest so that i can actually go play a game with a fully painted army that would be just more intimidating on the table you know like i'm coming along with it but it just takes a long time uh plus my number of videos are going to probably diminish a bit in the next few months uh just not that i'm not gonna be painting it's just the videos are gonna take a little longer to come out with uh, so fairy dust, this is what I'm using to highlight the edges of the armor and the shield and the boots and all that. And it's going to give it a little bit of a whiter highlight on the edges and all that, which is exactly what I wanted for this mission. And you can tell the difference now between, like I really go on the edge of uh, this shield here to really make it a little bit lighter and compared to the rest of the gold color and it does a good job the fairy dust does a great job and again you can use my code east mini 10 in eShopParabellum.com, and you can get your hands on these agema thoracites as well and also get your hands on the speed paints over at bootsickfdb.com and uh yeah so go take a look at these two websites go buy some speed paints go buy some miniatures comment down below what you guys think of my miniatures my videos and my channel overall i want to thank you guys for watching and we'll see you all in the next one